If you're looking for the answers, I still don't have them. But what I do have is a particular set of skills. Skills I've acquired over a very long career. Skills that make me a nightmare for people who mislead, misinform, or misrepresent the sports card industry. So if you don't do that, I'll let it go. But if you do, I'm going to talk about you. Welcome back to another episode of the Sports Card Investigator Show. My name is Andy, and I am your forever humble host. And before we start, I just wanted to say two words. Thank you. I really think that those words are just not used enough in today's world. People, I think people just take those words for granted. And a lot of times people just shrug their shoulders or maybe that's not the best way to state it. I guess it's more of uh, not acknowledging the people that support me in this channel uh, or a way to acknowledge them. Admittedly, I don't post videos that much or as much as most. I'm not a parrot of the every news item that hits the sports card hobby. And that is not a criticism. There are plenty of these content creators out there. Some are my friends that do a fantastic job and it keeps people updated. So I think that's important. So with that, I just find it amazing that so many of you guys watch my channel whenever I post a video. And the only thing that that I could think of or that that comes to mind is... And I can't deny the fact that you like me right now. You like me. Where else would you get such an entertaining random clip of actor or actress? You guys probably don't even know who that is. And I know that we sometimes disagree on things and that's perfectly fine. And I... I guess I want to tell you that I appreciate every one of you who watch, whether you like me, dislike it, everyone who watches, I really, really am appreciative of. And what I'm about to talk about now, I think it's important, some of you will disagree, but take a look at this. Hey, going through your cards? Yep. Look at that. Whoa, the one you got with Grandpa? Cheers. What's it worth? Everything. Can I keep it? No. So before I tell you my thoughts on that commercial, let's hear someone else's. The reality of it is totally false and fabricated, you know, like, because that is not how the hobby is. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. if, like, you, you know, for for some kid to go in a store, buy one pack of cards or one hobby box and pull a Shohei Otani Super Fractor and then not immediately get flown out to Golden's headquarters to, to get pitched uh, by by one of their, by Ken Golden himself to put that at auction right yep. away. And to never grade it your whole life and then to have it in a little, you know, cigar box or whatever it is. It's like, that's not it, guys. That's not reality. You know what I mean? So. All right. So let's talk about this jaded and misguided response by Dan, the great curator, to this heartwarming, I said my dog, heartwarming, heartwarming Tops commercial. And it was heartwarming, right? Look, I know I come off as a tough guy, but inside I'm just a teddy bear, sports card teddy bear. But this this commercial it touched me, and it succeeded in his in this mess in its message. It really did. Now I get in today's world where everything is about making the quick buck, flipping cards, where everyone's goal is getting flown out to some auction house headquarters, striking it rich. That the idea of holding on to a card or cards for sentimental reasons, well, that seems as rare as pulling well an Otani Super Fractor. But come on, guys. Are we really this jaded? Here's the thing. Commercials are meant to be a little 
a little idealistic, a little nostalgic. And I'll admit, this, this, this got me. It took me back to my own childhood, back even when, not even that long ago, when Ty and I, when Ty was just a kid and we were sitting around a table with my father, ripping wax and then later the cards that I inherited from my dad after he passed. He had a fantastic Scott Rowland collection. These ads are crafted to tug at your heartstrings. They just are. To remind you of those special moments. But let's be honest. If that commercial immediately the kid gets a call from Ken Golden, slapped the card up for auction and cashed out, I'm not sure that would really make for such a touching father-son bonding moment. Probably not, right? It'll make a decent episode of The King of Collectibles, but I digress. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not naive by any means. I know the hobby has changed. It's not just about collecting for fun anymore. It's about, it's about making money and making those big moves, traveling around the world to find that elusive card, flex it on Instagram or YouTube or whatever. But here's where Dan's response, in my opinion, goes off the rails. It's acting like there's only one way to be in this hobby. Like if you're not flipping cards or flying private, you're just pretending. But the truth is, most of us aren't living that high roller life, high roller life. Most of us are in it for, for the memories, the connections, and yes, the thrill of finding that special card. And that commercial, it speaks to me. I think it should speak to us, the regular guys and gals who might actually hang on to a card for decades if it means something, and not just because you're waiting for the market to peak. Time has passed. All right, let's talk about the elephant in the room. All these content creators themselves, these guys are out there hyping big money, the big money side of the hobby. They're showing off their latest investment pieces, spending racks of cash, flying private, rubbing elbows, with the elites of the hobby, making it seem like the only way to enjoy collecting is if you're, you're collecting these high value cards and making deals with the big boys or to steal a line from sports card radio, your hobby heroes. Yeah, it's entertaining, sure. It definitely brings more eyes to the hobby, but it also feeds into this idea that the only reason to collect is to get rich. Guess what? That's not what it's supposed to be about. So yeah, maybe that commercial, like I said before, is a bit idealized, but isn't that the point? To remind us, despite all the craziness, there's still something pure and fun about the hobby. And let's not forget all you marketing majors out there, marketing walks a fine line, right? They have to appeal to that kid who just is excited to open up the pack of cards and the flipper who's looking to make a quick buck. It's not, about, it's not about picking one lane. It's about showing us that there's room for everyone. There's room for both. And at the end of the day, let's not let our, we're all cynics out there. Let's not let our cynicism or the hype machine that this, these hobby cre content creators fuel blind us to the fact that, I know this is gonna sound corny, but it's the hobby's still about joy, the memories, and maybe even a little bit of the magic. So all the critics out there, I say lighten up. Not everything has to be about hustle and money and fame, notoriety. Sometimes it's just about enjoying the simple parts of the hobby. All right, let the hater comments roll in. I can take it, but... I just wanted to get this off my chest to you. I, I consider all you my friends, and I wanted to talk to you about this. I think sometimes we lose sight of the big picture, and it's not that I'm against making money in the hobby. God knows I made a lot of money in this hobby, but let's not forget what brought us here, what brought you to the first pack in the first place. I know for me, it wasn't about the profit, not even entered my mind. It was about the excitement, the joy, the trading with your buddies, opening up those cards in front of your friends and saying, I got this guy. Oh, I'll trade you this guy. Uh, who knows? Maybe I'm just getting more nostalgic as I 
as I get older. So, so here, so you know what? Chase those grails, make your money, but just don't let, don't just lose sight of what got you here in the first place. All right, that's it for a very sentimental episode of the Sports Card Investigator Show. If you like what you see, hit the like, hit the subscribe. If you don't like what you see, we've been through it. Until next time, take care.